Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be troubleshooting this AMD rig down here. I mentioned in my last crypto mining cave shed update, when I did the overview for the entire farm that while I was out for six weeks, this one particular rig went hard down. And I don't know why. The only thing I know is while I was out of town, I did see it completely offline. If I tried to restart it remotely using the tech and Wi-Fi switches that I used to do that, uh, it would not restart. When I came back into town briefly a few weeks ago, I came out here, I manually shut everything down, unplugged it, left it sitting for about 10 minutes, restarted it, and same deal, nothing, nothing to it. Now, the one thing I have done prior to shooting this video a few days ago, I replaced the USB drive because I thought it might just have been USB gone bad. So I remade a Hive OS USB and put it in here and I'm getting the same issue. And what's going on is it will boot, it will show all of the GPUs connected in the BIOS. So on that first boot, it'll show the BIOS pop up and it'll show green lights on all the GPUs. And then I immediately get a black screen after that. So I suspect, having worked with this rig for a while, that it is the processor. Now I do not know that. It could be the RAM, it could be the motherboard, it could be the processor. Typically when you're troubleshooting, the first thing you always wanna take a look at is power distribution. And the reason I'm not going straight to that is because a while back, actually right after I first built this rig, I had some ghosts in the system and I thought that may be it. So I had gone ahead and switched out the power supply and this power supply is golden unless it's broken since then. Uh, it, it's not, I don't think it's the problem. So we'll, we'll try that last if I don't find anything else. So if you've got any thoughts as we're getting started here, what you think it might be, what would you troubleshoot first? Let me know. I'm gonna show you everything we've got here. So I've got my iPad out and I've got all of my rigs up here and you can see this AMD rig right here. It's been offline and look at that offline. You probably, oops, you probably can't see that too good. It's been offline for 44 days. So that's how long this rig has been hard down. Now, what I've brought out here with me is uh, risers oftentimes are the culprit. So I did go ahead and bring a new riser just in case. I don't think that's it. I went ahead and brought a new SSD drive. And even though we're gonna run Hive OS, I picked this up pretty cheap, about $18, I think. Maybe even got it on sale for 16. We can remake an image with that if needed. I brought a couple USBs just to remake them pretty easily here. And I went ahead and brought a new processor and a new ASRock H110 motherboard. Now I think what I'm gonna do to start out is, actually before I do that, let me show you. Another resource we have is we do have this rig right over here, which in the studio was our test rig for a little while. And right now it's, it's called Solo just because we have the single GPU running on there. But what I could do is I've been meaning to put this down here. I could go ahead and do that project, get that out of the way. And if I needed to, I could start moving GPUs from down here up here because I know this is a working bare bones system and I could at least test all the GPUs. So that's one way I could go. I think before I do that, what I'm gonna do to get started is, I'm gonna remove all of these GPUs from the motherboard. I'm gonna leave everything connected up here, remove all of this from the motherboard, maybe leave one connected, and I'm gonna see if it'll just go ahead and boot all the way up, and that'll give me an indication of maybe what I should do next. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and I guess, take one of these USBs and remake another image of Hive just in case, just in case I got bad luck, you know, in case I got bad luck and had two bad images. I don't wanna do hours of troubleshooting here. So I can have that running at the same time. So let me get that set up guys. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this stuff disconnected and get these drives made up. And what I've done is I've got a real inexpensive little netbook that I bought uh, a couple years ago 
and I'm going to use this to make my images from while I'm doing maintenance over there on the machine. So let me get this set up and I'll be right back guys. All right guys, so here you go. You can see right there on the first boot, it was showing all green lights on all the GPUs on their motherboard. And so basically what it does is it sits right here at the uh, option to load the OS. And once it loads Ubuntu, uh, it, just, it just goes black screen from there. Here we go, two seconds, one. Yeah, there we go, black screen. So I've let it sit like this for 10, 15 minutes at a time after a couple boots. And it's the, uh, it's the same thing no matter what. Okay guys, so I've got everything disconnected. I went ahead and disconnected every single GPU. I've got power connected to the ATX power supply only. We don't need the server power supply right now because we're not powering any GPUs. And we're gonna do a power on test. And I just wanna see if this will boot from the uh, USB into Hive. We should be able to see this successfully boot. Okay, so now I've got Ethernet connected and we're gonna power this on and we'll move over to the monitor. There we go, fan is spinning. There we go, we've got network connectivity lights powering up, okay. All right, back over here, no GPUs. Ubuntu, it's gonna auto boot in 26 seconds. Let me go get my keyboard. So I've got my little Bluetooth keyboard here. And this just allows me to move. Go ahead and control it. So I'm gonna select Ubuntu. And it looks like the same thing. So yeah. We were able to eliminate the GPUs. There's something going on. All right, so my feeling is it's something going on with the motherboard, the processor, or the RAM. Could be the cables to the motherboard, uh, maybe from the power supply. I, I don't think that's it. So I'm gonna start prepping the motherboard and processor, but before I do that, I'm gonna play around with this RAM just a little bit. I'm gonna try to reseat it, maybe just use one stick of RAM and see if there's anything going on there. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, so what I did is I just pulled one stick of RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and power it back on. I reseated the one that's in there and let's see if this makes a difference. So we're booting up. Let me try. Yeah, same thing. All right, guys. So just again, to try to save time, what I did is I pulled this USB out of this AMD 470 rig and I took it over and I put it in the single card 5700 XT rig, the solo rig. So that's kind of a test rig anyway. And so what that has done is that's taken solo right here down offline. And we're gonna see if this 470 rig comes up. Because if it does, that will tell me that the USB is okay. So, yeah, so check this out guys. That rig is not booting. Which means, I mean, there's potentially something wrong with that USB drive. and. Like I said, I actually remade one, so I tried two different USB drives in there, one that had been running for months on end with no problems. Heck, I hope that's it. I actually hope that's it, because that means this will be an easier fix than swapping a bunch of hardware out. Okay, let me, uh, let me go and just remake a brand new USB. Okay guys, so I just went in and remade my USB. This will be the third. This is a completely separate piece of hardware, completely separate USB. So I'm gonna go ahead and boot this without the GPUs connected, see if it goes ahead and boots in the hive, and then we'll go from there. If it does, then, uh, man, that's a bit frustrating that I had two bad USBs in a row. Um, but let's try this, let's see what happens, and if it works, then I'll get the rest of these connected, and we'll be back and running. Okay. Come on. Give me some luck. Oh, there it goes. Excellent. Oh, man. I haven't been happier to see an OS load in a while. That was pretty... Nothing difficult about that troubleshooting. It was just a matter of... I was a little thrown off because I had two bad USB drives in a row. 
So, okay, let me, uh, let me shut this down. Let me get everything reconnected and we'll do one final check and make sure we can get this rig back up and running with no problems here. Okay, so I got everything reconnected. I got all of the GPUs connected back to the motherboard. I went ahead and reseated both of the sticks of RAM that are in there, reconnected both power supplies and network. Uh, we've got the new USB with the new OS loaded in there and video. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. So yeah, let's power this on and let's go check it out. Okay, there we go, all green lights. and excellent all right there we go guys okay let me get back over to the hive os web interface and give this a minute we'll make sure that it boots into there and uh yeah this one will be done guys okay so you can see right here we've got seven workers and what we're looking for if this os is working is eight okay there we go guys all right so quick refresh eight are online and excellent all right after gosh over a month we've got this thing back online and it was something simple how about that very simple uh it was just the operating system which you know looking back on it i mean i suspected that's what it was right off the bat and several weeks ago the only thing i did is i came out here and put a new usb in there but um I must have grabbed one that I had had trouble with in the past, I'm, is what I'm thinking. In essence, I was testing with two bad USB drives. So I guess the lesson learned here is test the simple things first, guys. I mean, it's obvious, but just kind of make a list in your head. What are the easy things to go over? Test those first before you start digging deep in any hardware or anything like that. Fortunately, I had, you know, not only were we troubleshooting this rig, but fortunately I had this rig over here where I was able just to swap the OS's out real quick and get to the bottom of it. We have our hash rates back up to about 30 mega hash per GPU, um, which is about where they should be. I can tweak these and actually get them a little bit higher, but the most important thing for now is just getting this rig back into production. And I'm happy it's done uh, because I'm actually gonna have to leave um, here in a few days to go handle some stuff with family. So, I really need everything to be in tip-top shape when I go and just kind of go into passive mode and let everything run. Hey, real quick, I wanted to show you what the profitability on this rig looked like. I don't think I've done that since I first built this and put it into production. So just to give you a quick overview, here we are in Hive. We're at 207.7 .7 mega hash. Each of the GPUs is running close to 30 mega hash. If I really blow out the overclocks on here, I can get these, actually these 470s up to about 31 and a half, which is kind of nuts for these, how old these cards are, but it's, it's pretty inefficient. So you can see my overclocks right over here if you want to take a look at that. I feel like one of these days when I get a little bit more time, I want to pull one of these 470s, bring it inside and take another run at the BIOS. I feel pretty confident I can get the power consumption lower on each one of these. And at that point, the entire rig is at 836 watts. And for those of you that are new to Hive, you really can't rely on this, especially when it comes to AMD cards. NVIDIA is a bit closer, but uh, when it comes to AMD cards, you can only rely on this if you measure everything out at the wall. And what I do is I come into the settings and I manually make the adjustments. So this is what I know that I had measured at the wall before I put this into production and it will as you make changes based on you know anything you do with the overclocks this will go up or down based on what you had originally measured at the wall so it's not perfect but it's pretty pretty close so what I want to do is I want to hop over to what to mine to give you an idea if I was selling daily what this rig would be making and as you guys know I don't sell daily okay so we're at 208 mega hash we're at 836 watts on F hash and I haven't dropped anything else in here because these 470s and 580s aren't super great and a lot else a little bit kind of on Kapow it does pretty well on Progpal but if we calculate that you come down here you can see we are making roughly between five dollars and 575 a day whether we are mining F and having it converted to Bitcoin using something like NiceHash or if we mine directly we're at 575 per day 
and that is after electric which is 776 so roughly this rig's using about two dollars in electric per day which is not great i mean compared to the efficiency of a lot of the newer cards but hey you know 575 a day that's that's really good that's really good uh, and a solid ROI for this rig, considering I paid about $80 for each of those 470s and the 580s. Uh, each of those has Samsung memory, and I actually bought those when GPUs were available and people weren't looking to purchase them. I got them from Nerd Gears for about $115 each. So pretty good deal, pretty good ROI on this rig. But everything I've been mining, I've been converting to Bitcoin, and that has turned out to be working really well for me with this current run-up in price. We're at about 18,700, I think, here at the moment, the time of recording. So let me jump back over to the shed and we'll keep rocking from there. All right, that'll do it for this episode, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got any comments, let me know if you've had issues like that in the past where it was something simple. Let me know kind of how you go about troubleshooting these things. If you have a method to it, uh, I'd love to hear about that. And we'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Bye bye. Lucky night, day it. Out loud, code monkey, not crazy. Just proud, code monkey like Tweedos. Code monkey like Tab and Mountain Dew. Code monkey, very simple man. With big, warm, fuzzy secret heart. Code monkey like you.